Hey folks, Joey Vigor here. Hope you guys have been enjoying Growl. I've been enjoying getting your comments and questions, and I hope that uh, you guys are having as much fun with it as I have. So I'm going to tell you about the four expansions right now, and maybe if I have time at the end, I'll mention uh, what I'm what I'm up to uh, for the next thing. Uh, so first of all, let's let's just talk about the spells expansion. So. It comes inside the Howly Growly box. It's probably the easiest to learn expansion because the cards are all going to be face up and public information. So what, what you do is you take three to five of these spells. You do it, you shuffle it face down. You take three or four or five of them. You could, you could handle five, why not, right? So you take them and they're going to have a different colored back. It's going to have this blue spell back. It looks like a, like a blue shield. So when you shuffle that into the deck, they're still going to be face up when they come out just like the normal cards, but they're going to have the shield icon in the upper right. Um, so just like the two knight cards that have the shield icon, Seance and uh, uh, Silver Bullet, these are actually not going to go to the player's hand. They're going to go in front of the player, and it's going to provide a static, which means like an ongoing effect for that player, probably for the rest of the game, unless something cancels it or, or moves it to another player. So for example, with this one, Wolfsbane, it basically provides a limitation that makes it harder. So you, you give this to someone you think is a wolf, and it provides, it makes it harder for them to uh, pass bites, basically. Um, Effigy Doll, this is always funny. You would want to give this to someone that you trust, because they're going to be, at night, passing a third card across the table um, to any other player's home tile. So they can't pass it to their neighbors, and they can't pass it to themselves. So it's, if it's only a four or five player game, you're going to have to send it you know, to one of those remaining players. In a larger game, you have a little bit more um, options. So you could send, say, a wound someone uh, to someone further away, or if you're a wolf, you could send a bite and bite somebody that you couldn't normally bite um, using your effigy doll. Um, and then there's a couple, like this is a summon creeper. It lets you spend gold to do things. Um, so it's a pretty simple game. If you have questions uh, about, you know, what, what your power is, you can pretty much ask the table um, since it's all face-up information. And... Uh, and obviously, um, almost all of these are going to be triggered on your turn only. Like, there's one where basically, called Monkey's Paw, where on your turn when it's time to give a card with the Monkey's Paw, if you have it in front of yourself, you can take the card for yourself, which is normally not allowed. But if it's a wound, you have to take it. So, occasionally there are things that trigger, like there's a, a Cauldron, for example, and a Wishing Well, where cards that go to players hands instead end up on top of the the uh that card or cards that you send out to other players instead go onto your card but again generally it's going to happen on your turn and if you have questions about it it's all face up information you can ask the, the table and they can help uh, sort it out and make sure that the triggering is all happening at the right time so that's the spells expansion pretty simple like i said i would only recommend playing with about three to five of them don't don't play with all of them that that would dramatically increase the uh, length of the game uh curses expansion also comes in the howly growly box this is also very simple but the information is not face up so you don't want to start players off with this you want to make sure they have several games behind them before they get into the curses so curses are more complicated versions of the regular cards you, they still have the normal back so it gets sent to players hands it goes into their hands and say some of them are really good super sav it's two sav icons uh cursed charm wound icon and a charm icon so it hurts you but it also helps you not uh turn into a wolf so these are very very simple there's two complicated ones the holy water um this is basically an interesting one if you're a wolf, it's really bad for you. It's worth a wound. But if you're a human, it's actually worth a salve. So an interesting thing can happen if you have the holy water in your hand. If somebody gives you a bite publicly and everyone sees the bite coming to you and then you suddenly die, well, obviously you can't reveal your team, but you have revealed that you're a wolf because bites don't add wounds. But if you turn into a wolf with that bite, then suddenly this would activate, obviously, and turn from a from a uh, salve into a wound. So that's the holy water. Um, oh, and I'll just mention the, um, the hex and the infection. Infection cancels all of your salves simultaneously. So you want to pass this, get get rid of it as soon as possible. Hopefully give it to a wolf if you're a human and vice versa if you're a wolf. Um, and then the hex cancels all your charm icons, all your all your charms. And I should mention one more thing with with all cards um, with the with the negation, you know, the little slash icon that negates something, it never negates an entire card. It only negates that icon. So if you have say a salve and it cancels a wound, but you have the uh, the cursed charm, so the salve would cancel the wound, but that that charm is still active. So it only cancels the icon that it cancels. It doesn't cancel the entire card. So that is the curses expansion.
Um, now, for those people who bought the uh, Seven Sins expansion, it comes with two expansions, um, the uh, Seven Sins and then the Undead. So I'll just mention those real quick. Seven Sins, you don't need to, to uh, shuffle more than, say, five to seven of these in. Um, these are also, just like the uh, Spells expansion, these also have that blue Spells back. So, and the... the uh, little blue spell icon in the upper right so same same with the spells expansion these don't go into players hands when you when you draw them and pass them they also go face up in front of that player so this is probably the second most uh easy to learn um expansion just because it's almost entirely i believe it's entirely face up information yet again um so it comes out of the deck and here's the critical critical thing with with these if there's yellow text the player who draws it reads the yellow text so this one, Diligence. Other players announce their total number of sav icons, blah, 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 blah. So that's something I, I read. Yellow text, the player who draws it reads. But of course, you have to give it to a player other than yourself, just like any other card in the game. If there's white text, that's the text that's active, static, ongoing for the player that you give it to. So Pride, during the night phase, you must do blah, blah, blah. Um, so white, white text is what the player who receives it reads. And yellow text is the player who draws it. And some of them, as you can imagine, um, have both. So this one, Patience. Give this to another player with the fewest number of spell cards. Um, you break ties. One card's a little interesting. Um, it's it Basically, you place it between two players pointed at a player. Um, this one, for example, let me see if I can find it. Um, one of these, it's like... Um, you know, this adds a sav icon for both of your closest living neighbors. That's interesting. So your neighbors get something, but you don't. Um, that's kindness. Um, and uh, let me see. Uh, here we go. Humility. It's it's worth a wound in the upper left. So that icon in the upper left, it pretend it's part of your hand. It's still canceled or negated by a sav in your hand, but it's public information. So cards on the table, just like in the in the uh, in any situation, like say the regular um, silver bullet card, the knight card that goes in front of yourself in the regular game, that's basically wounds that are considered part of your hand. Same as, as this. These wounds or, or whatever uh, charms or bites in the upper left are still considered part of your hand if they're in front of you, but uh, obviously you, you can't get rid of them. They're permanent unless a card changes it. So this one, humility, give this to a player facing their neighbor. So you say I would give it to my my player on my right, but facing me, then I would read this, they would read this, this adds a wound icon for you and a charm icon for the closest living neighbor to the side this is facing. So basically, if I give this to a neighbor, it hurts them, but it helps me. So you would, you would point it. So a couple of these are a little complicated. Just read it, and it shouldn't, shouldn't be that confusing. Um, just make sure you read it carefully. If you have questions, again, it's face-up information. Finally, we have the Undead expansion. That comes with the Seven Sins expansion, and it is by far the most complex expansion, and it removes player elimination from the game. So, I would say it works best probably six to ten players. It does work with four and five, though. You just have to, there's a couple cards that have to be taken out for four and five players. It's very powerful um, Undead expansion in a four or five player game. So, so the way it works is it's going to come with these new roll cards. These basically just reveal that you're not you're not um, just a regular dead player that's eliminated, now you're undead. These are sort of bonus cards I threw in there. If you want to sleeve them, I didn't provide sleeves for these because they're just extras, but you can sleeve them with regular uh, clear sleeves. Um, they go on top of your home tile and they re reveal the hand coming out of the grave, so um, you're undead. The game normally ends in any game when there's two or fewer players and you skip to the, to the growl phase at that point. So the undead want to get to that point faster and have only two or fewer players left alive. So they want to convert other players to being dead, so there's new undead players to join their little undead army. The way it works is, on the undead turn, so it comes around, okay, I got killed, oh no. Now on my next day phase turn, I set out the knight, you skip past me, just like any dead player. On my undead turn, I draw the top, I shuffle these undead cards, I draw the top card, I read it privately, and I either resolve this card, which is usually a public, public, uh, uh, card you have to reveal. Um, or I instead take a card from my hand, the hand of cards that I set aside when I died, and put it on top, face up, on top of the deck. So the next person has to deal with it. Usually you would want to put a wound on top of the deck, but occasionally if you're combining this with other expansions, you might do something else. Um, so putting a wound on top is very powerful, but sometimes these cards are even more powerful. So the way it works, say um, this one, 
Um, just like with the uh, Curses expansion and the uh, Seven Sins expansion, if there's ever yellow text, that's text that you read when you draw the card. And if there's white text um, or black text, basically any other text that's not yellow, um, then that is the text that the player who receives the card has to read. So any undead card that has that little uh, spell icon in the upper right, that little she blue shield, that's going to be a card that's going to go face up and pu public information in front of them. None of the undead cards get shuffled into people's hands because it doesn't have that regular back. So you either it's either a one-off, like, you know, possess. I possess you and I get to do something. And then it's gone. It's discarded once it's resolved. Or it's a spell, reanimate. I'm going to give this to someone else. It's going to have this little icon there. So it goes in front of someone else. And then it is active for that player. So yellow text, you read yourself. White or black text is actually read by the person it goes to. So in the case of there's a couple Final Night cards here. So I would draw from the undead, undead decks. Say I get a Final Night, the Plague. I can privately replace the Final Night card with this undead themed uh, Final Night. So that's something I would do. And then you don't read the rest of the text until the person whose turn it is, the living player, would draw it and then resolve it for the Final Night. Um, so that's pretty much it. You try to kill as many people as possible. So if I kill the person next to me, then on their turn, instead of being a human, now they're undead. So you kill as many people as possible, try to get a snowball effect of undead uh, zombie people to uh, go around. Have fun with the undead expansion. Um, have fun with all four expansions. And um, finally, I'll mention just real quick that I'm also working on a new expansion called the Madness expansion, which is where you're going to be shuffling cards face down into the face up deck. So face down cards, they're going to have the regular uh, the regular uh, card back, and so those are going to be madness cards, which are going to make people have to act mad. Um, and uh, if you disable the bite icon, because the, the, the wolf infection also spreads madness in that expansion. So if you disable the bite icon, you're still, you still have to be mad, because uh, madness doesn't go away just by curing the, uh, the infection. So that's the madness expansion. I'm going to hopefully launch it on October 31st. That'll be fun. Um, so uh, more on that on October 31st, uh, scary Halloween, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed your summer, and we'll talk soon. Have an awesome September, and let's get spooky!